we need your help. We don't have the million dollars that the Beverly Hill type Jews have to give to these people. We need funds because the choice in this election is not between Kahana and Likud. It's between Kahana and the PLO. That's what this election is. If God forbid we can't attain power, I want you to know that in, in 10 years there will be a, a coalition government in Israel between the Arabs and the extreme left. And there will go Israel. So you support us and you back us. What will you be saving your money for if, God forbid, Israel goes under? Don't cheer me and don't clap me and don't say, Kahana, Kahana. I don't need that. We need support. We need money. We need funds. The Talmud tells us that when God wanted to give the Torah to the Jewish people, all the mountains, the mightiest mountains, the highest mountains, the loftiest mountains, all of them came to God and begged him, give me the honor. I want the honor. Give the Torah on my peak. And God said, no. I have a small mountain, and his name is Sinai. And I'm going to give the Torah on that mountain, on that small mountain, to teach the Jew a lesson, to teach the Jew to be humble. That's the story. Nice story goes over well with Shulweis. Now, to be humble. Now. <coughs> the Gera Rebbe, the Rebbe of Gur, studied this particular portion of the Talmud, and he asked a good question. A question which I'm sure is obvious to many, many people here already. And he said, there's something wrong here. If God wanted to teach the Jew to be humble, why didn't he give the Torah in a valley? It's about the most humble place that one can imagine. You don't get lower than a valley. So he answered the question with a tremendous answer. And he said, God wanted to teach the Jews two lessons. One, be humble. Two, don't be too humble. <laughs> Never be a valley. Jews are in that. Don't let people stamp on you and trample on you and stomp on you. That's not the Jewish way. There is no mitzvah to be stepped upon. Nothing good came out of Auschwitz. Nothing good. It's better to be a winner than to be a loser. It's better to live than die. And it's better to have a Jewish state that is hated by the whole world than an Auschwitz that's loved by it. I know that. In 1938, Zev Jabotinsky was scheduled to speak in Vilna, in Lithuania. And the Jewish Socialist Bund, the anti-Zionist Socialist Bund, put out a flyer which read in part to the Jewish workers and Jewish masses of Vilna, the spiritual father of Jewish fascism, Vladimir Jabotinsky, is coming to Vilna. Of late, this adventurer and political charlatan has become very popular. Jewish workers and Jewish masses, show your contempt for the Purim general and give him the military command, evacuate yourself from Poland. Down with fascism, down with Jabotinsky. Things never change. In the 1930s, it was Jabotinsky was called the fascist. <clears throat> In the 1940s, it was Menachem Begin. The fascist. 1985, it's Kahana, the fascist. But history will never record the little pygmies and dwarfs who call Jabotinsky a fascist. And history will forget the pygmies and dwarfs who called Begin a fascist. And history will forget the parasites of Israel, Shimon Peres and his parasites, <laughs> and the JCRC in Los Angeles, 
because as Jabotinsky's name goes down in history, and as Begin's name goes down in history, so will it be that those people who call us fascists, they are the ones who someday will look back upon a Kach movement and Kahana because we are coming to power. Faith in God, faith in the God of Israel, and a strong Jewish hand, that's the way to bring the Messiah. I was in Beit Shemesh a few months ago, a, a development town. And the Jew came over to me, a man in his late 50s, and he said to me, I have two daughters, both married to Arabs. One lives in the Arab village of Taiba. And then he added the following words. He said, when I lived in Morocco, did I ever dream in my blackest nightmare that my daughter would go out with an Arab? I came to the Holy Land to have this happen to me. Who protests? Who speaks out against this? Who cares about it? Where are the religious parties? Where are the rabbis? The Arab wakes up in his village. His name is Ibrahim. By evening, he's in Dizengov Square. He walks over to the Jewish girl. Shalom, my name is Avi. Avi, Avi. Ibrahim, Avi. And who cares? Who gives a damn? You go to the beaches in the summer and you see the cars parked along the beach and you see the license plates, Shechem and Jenin and Tulkarm and Aza. What are they looking for? Water, sun? They're looking for Jewish girls. Because Arab girls don't go to the beach. Their fathers would kill them. So they find the Jewish girls because they have money in, in their pocket. They don't serve in the army. They work. They make money. And so it continues. The spiritual destruction of the Jewish people. For 37 years we waited for someone to reach the Knesset and say these things and give to them as they have given all these years. Well, I've arrived. I'm in the Knesset.